Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, thanks, to, thanks for joining us here in How to Use Elastic IO iPass 101. Uh, we are Elastic IO. I'm Jimena Perezcano, and here with me is my colleague Ben. He's our customer success and platform expert. He will show you around the platform, its user interface and functions. He will also demonstrate how to very easily and fast build an integration flow without any coding. So um, thanks for joining, and let's start. Great, thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. So, thanks for the uh, short introduction. Just to reiterate the, the plan here, the plan is to go through uh, a brief overview of the interface, actually build an integration flow, and then uh, we'll step into your questions and, uh, and answer them as, as fully as we can. So, Elastic.io is a integration platform as a service. The interface is uh, accessed over the internet, it's cloud-based. Uh, the background technology is all based on Docker and Kubernetes, but it's provided as a hosted service. So from your perspective, you just get to use the, uh, use the tool as a service, and uh, you don't need to worry about any of the uh, infrastructure behind it. <clears throat> so this is the interface. Um, we have a navigation on the left-hand side, which we'll uh, go through quickly. Um, we have our, our account or our, our contract, which is like our high-level uh, organization or grouping. Then below that, we have uh, what's called a workspace. So this is like, can be thought of as a logical grouping or structure to hold our integration flows in. You see, I've got a couple here, webinar and demo. You're able to build up as many of these as you like. They're all to do with... Uh, how you organize your, your integrations. Then we go into the executions and logs. This is how, where I can see what's happening. Uh, then we're looking at, so we just quickly click on here, here, we can look at our, we have a full run log. So this is every execution of every integration that's happened on the platform. Um, we can step into slightly more detail here with with drilling down right into the precise uh, logs of the actual Docker that was running your task. So every area of our credentials, uh, every, every system we come to integrate with has some kind of credentials, and this is where we get to store them. Okay, so this is where we can go and set up our uh, access to various systems and uh, applications. And each one is set up so as you would expect for that particular system. So if we look at the Dropbox that we're going to use, it's asking me, in this case, to put in my access token for that system. If I go to something like um, something more uh, different like Magento, it's going to ask me to fill in the API keys, et cetera, for, uh, for that Magento system. Okay, so, so we, we store and encrypt these credentials for you, um, and they're held in the, in the platform for use in flows. And, and the benefit here is you can reuse credentials across flows, so you can build up a, uh, one set of credentials that gets used across multiple flows. Agents are a way of dealing with um, on-premise integrations. We won't demoing that today, but this is how we handle uh, on-premise to cloud or, or on-premise to on-premise, basically behind the firewall integrations. Um, and then down at the bottom here, we've got our areas where we can administer and structure our um, developer teams. So this, the platform allows you to build components, so you can actually build your own integration component, and this is the area where you, you get to set that up. But let's get straight into the flows um, and really focus on the, the main task here, which is to build an integration um, and just show you how easy that is and also um, how, how flexible it can be. So in this case today, we're going to build an integration using some pretty generic systems, um, but just to demonstrate the, the, the ease of use as well as the, the kind of power of, uh, of the platform, to, to perform these integration tasks. So we start by adding a new flow. And here we're presented with the UI, which is gonna let us build up the flow. Um, and in our terminology, this is really uh, 
steps of a flow. So we have like a business task and we go from one step to the next to the next. So we'll look for our first step. And in this case, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some data from a Google Sheet. Okay, so I have a Google Sheet here uh, prepared, which is just full of dummy data, uh, first name, last name, email, and country. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our Google Spreadsheets component to pick up that data and then I'm going to work with it and then um, output it in this case to Dropbox and uh, email. So this could be very much like collect, collect some data from an API. In this case, we're using the Google Spreadsheets API, but it could be any other API. Um, so collecting some data, doing something with it, and we'll do some very simple transformations. Uh, so get some data, do something with it, and then send it on to a destination. Okay, so we choose our Google Spreadsheets and we have a, what's a function here. Now, depending on what the component supports, uh, you have a, a list of functions. And in this case, it's, it's a spreadsheet. So the function on the, the get or the first step of a flow is, is pretty basic. On the, on the output, you might have more complicated kind of updates or inserts or things like that. But here, it's simply get the spreadsheet. I get the spreadsheet going. Okay. So I already have some credentials. Okay. But I could add new credentials. So this, um, if I add new, it's going to pop up a, uh, a new uh, OAuth, in this case, authentication um, window that I'll step through and pick up credentials. But we don't need to for now. So I'm just going to select my existing credentials. And then I'm going to choose my spreadsheet. Now, what you'll notice here is as I click on the um, drop down, the loading bar uh, uh, starts. And what's happening here is we're actually uh, we're actually going to Google. We start our Docker container is starting. We're downloading the code for that component. We're executing the code. We're going to Google, getting a list of all the spreadsheets that I have access to. And we're bringing that back onto the user interface. And as you can see, I've selected the one here called webinar data, which unsurprisingly corresponds to the webinar data uh, up at the top. I then again do this. So this is a dynamic component. This is not working off a static schema. It's actually going to Google, collecting the, the data, and building up the UI to present me with the right information. So again, here I go to go to select the worksheet. And in this case, I've only got one worksheet, so uh, it's going to uh, just show me that. Sheet one. OK. What do I want to collect? Am I, am I picking up rows or columns? Well, in this case, I want to get the rows. Um, this interface here, so, so this, these well, five fields are all dynamic and depend on the platform you're integrating. So here we're, we're building up information about the spreadsheet. If it was an e-commerce platform or something else, the fields would represent what, we, what you'd expect to see on an e-commerce platform. Okay. Uh, use first row or column as a header, yes. Okay. Um, and select all data, yes. We want to get everything. Okay. So now I go continue. Now, we're working with integrations here, and when we're integrating, we want to use data to we want to see the data we're working with. It makes the task of configuring next steps a lot easier. It also brings the kind of whole process to life. We're working with real information, not just uh, API documentation and specifications. We're actually able to use real, real data. So I'm going to retrieve a sample from uh, Google Spreadsheets. Okay. Now, sometimes that's not possible, you know, for whatever reason, you may be working with a system that's not accessible, in which case you can just put in a sample of data manually, you can copy and paste the, uh, the data. But we'll go and get a sample from Google uh, Spreadsheets. Now, this is a, an important step of uh, an understanding for us on integrations. It doesn't matter what system we're talking to, whether we're getting data from a database or an API or a, uh, you know, some other flat file or whatever it might be, once it's on the platform, the data is in JSON format. Okay, so 
no matter what you're communicating with, that component, in this case Google, that component will bring the data onto the platform in JSON format, okay? So that means all our components become consistent and can talk to each other, okay? So here we have some data, and if we look at our spreadsheet, it matches, okay? First, last email, country, and we've got the same information, okay? So we go continue, onto our next step. And in this case, I want to build a, I'm, I'm actually gonna create a CSV file and I'm gonna place it on a Dropbox folder. So this could be some, uh, you know, simple marketing process where you collect data from somewhere, package it up, and then place it onto a, uh, into a folder for, for later processing. Okay, so I'm gonna use the CSV component, which is here. And I'm going to write the CSV attachment. And I'm gonna do, define my column heading, so name, email, country. Okay, it's, it's comma separated. I have other options, but it's comma separated. And here is the mapping process. So this is where I get to choose my data that I want to go into each of those columns. So name, email, country have appeared here as options. And it's a simple task of expanding the, the UI elements, navigating through the Google Spreadsheets data and saying, I want in my name column, I want to put the first name and the last name. Okay, so I'm building up a name, and we'll come back to this uh, later. In the email, I want to build up the, I want to take the email address, and in the country, I want to take the country name. Okay, so this is simple UI-based uh, mappings. Okay, so we're just building up through the UI. Can and how to duplicate uh, mappings, and there we have this option, which is, uh, on the drop down here, sorry, which is JSONator. Okay, and I'll touch on that later when we come to our, um, our thing, but we have a far more advanced transformation language that we can, we can build out, okay? And if you want to see what your data is actually gonna look like, you just click on this icon here and it will show you. And if you look there, I've not got a space between my first and last name, so I'm gonna put my cursor in the middle, press space, and now, it demonstrates how my data will look. Okay, again, press continue, and we do another sample. And the reason we do the sample is the same process. When I go to my next step, I want to have the same uh, thing. I want to have real data to work with, okay? So what's happening here is it's taking a line of that, it's taking that data, it's executing the CSV component, it's building a CSV, and then it's going to present me, in this case, just the um, how many rows. So it's just one row and the URL. I don't need to worry about this. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to do anything with it. And the system will handle the passing of the attachment for me. So let's go to our next step. Of course, all these can be, uh, I can describe this so I can, uh, I can tell, I can describe what I'm doing in my flow, you know, building a CSV. So when I come back to it later, it's all easier to, for me to, to understand. Okay, so next step, we're gonna, we're gonna do Dropbox. Okay, so I wanna deposit this file in Dropbox. So I'm, in this case, I'm going to create, uh, sorry, upsert a file. So my options would be create a folder, uh, create a file, or upsert file. Now upsert basically means is, is just a simple update or insert. So it's basically gonna update the file if it's there. If it's not there, it's going to create a new file, okay? But I've got a create folder option, so I could create a folder. Maybe I create a folder for today's date and then place next step, I place a file in it. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna upsert the file, okay? Again, I've got credentials stored, um, but let's just show you how straightforward that is. So I have here on my other screen a API key. So I go add new credentials. Which 
which I put in here, put my access token in, I go verify, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna go to Dropbox, check this, is, this works, yeah? And then let me save it. So this, again, at every step, we get to verify or sample data, et cetera, okay? Okay, so now we're in our Dropbox configuration and it's telling me what's the path to the file you want to save. And in this case, it's in a folder called webinar. And in this case, I'm just gonna call the file uh, my demo file. File. Okay. Continue. Okay, just to prove it, I'm gonna to go to the Dropbox folder, into the webinar folder, and we know we only have a, we have a file called my file, which I can get rid of. Um, okay, so we have an empty folder. Let's go back to our flow, and we're going to receive, uh, retrieve sample. So this will do our process. Again, it's going to go off to Dropbox. It's going to try and generate that file like it has with our demo data. Okay. So if I go to Dropbox now, you'll see my demo file. Okay. Now, because I know that's got sample data in it, I'm just, for, for the purpose of this, I'm going to delete it. Okay. Because I want to actually execute the file and show you in the real task. Okay. So we have our file created. Finish that step. And then the last step of my uh, flow is going to be send an email to the, uh, let's say, the marketing department to say the task has been completed. Okay. Now I've got an um, email address here that I'll use just for this purpose. Subject uh, task. Complete, complete, and then here, it's gonna build up a really simple uh, string and it's gonna say something like this. Uh, your file has been uploaded here. And then I'm gonna insert in Dropbox the path to my file, okay? Now I could get fancy there and I could put the full URL of Dropbox in and all the rest of it, but just for the moment, I'm just making it uh, like this, okay? So it's gonna send an email to this dummy mailbox, subject task complete, and then a dynamic string, your file has been uploaded here. Um, and it was done, what else have we got? Uh, at this time. Okay. I'm not gonna bother with the sample in this case because I don't really wanna go off sending emails. So I'm just gonna do the dummy sample. So that's a manual sample. Okay, so now we have our integration flow. I'm gonna give it a name. So this is our um, Google to Dropbox and email. Okay. So now we get the option to publish our flow. So this is a draft um, and I'll, I'll simply just publish it now. Okay, so here's my publish button. And if I publish that, we can go back to our flows UI. And we'll see we have a flow ready to go. Google to Dropbox and email. Okay, I'm gonna just start that. Uh, so first of all, there's no email in our uh, in our mailbox, yeah, um, and there's no file in our Dropbox. Okay, so I'm just going to start the flow. So now this is starting up. If I go to dashboard, I can see my flow has started. I can click on it, and we can look at what's going on. Okay, so. 
if I click on an individual step, I get to actually see the docket container execution logs, and you can see it's quickly built up. There are 100 rows um, were, were read. The next step is going to CSV file, and then Dropbox, and then email. So one CSV, one Dropbox, one email. OK, so that's all done. So if I go to webinar data, uh, sorry, webinar Dropbox, I have a demo just now. So if we go and click on that, we should see some data in there. Here we go, right? If I go back and if I go to my Gorilla Mail, which is not quite so uh, speedy, we should see in a second we've got an email coming in here. OK, task complete, file uploaded. OK. There's actually one email, that's just to do with this uh, junk email. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a quick look at that. So we've got Google Spreadsheet to CSV, to Dropbox, and to email. Okay, um, that's the sort of simple, you know, simple workflow of, a, of an integration flow. There's loads of other stuff that we can get into um, if we look at the flow. If we just step into it, we've got the ability to copy and paste. Um, sorry, you can copy your flow, you can paste it, you, you can duplicate, you can generate everything for the API, uh, you can build up loads of kind of you know, much more complicated workflows. And the other one, just to briefly uh, show, is the ability at each step of a flow, you can create a fork, okay, so you can branch your flow out. So, just to see that. So you can start to have multi, kind of multi-dimensional uh, integration flows. Okay, so I think in summary, that's the kind of that's the basics of building a flow. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and there, in the case of uh, I don't know, 15 minutes, you've built an integration from Google. You've done some basic manipulation of data, created a file in Dropbox, and sent an email. Okay, so that's the. Uh, end of the kind of brief demo, and now we'll open up to questions to from from any of the attendees. Wow, thank you very much, Ben. That was very very fast and very easy. Um, actually, we have some questions. Uh, our uh, here, our friend Max says, "What if you don't have a connector for the system they need?" Okay, great. So so yeah, so connectors are. Uh, we have kind of two distinct groups of connectors. Firstly, we have quite a long catalog of connectors, um, but let's take the case where you don't have a connector. Um, so in this case, you've got two options, really. The first is you can build a connector. So we provide an SDK that lets you build your own connectors. We provide both uh, sample code as well as many of our components are open source. And this allows you to build out components uh, to integrate with your own systems or any systems. And it's two languages. It's either Node.js or Java. Doesn't matter which you choose, that's personal preference or perhaps uh, uh, referencing the system you're working with. There's, you can use external libraries as well, so you can build up connectors pretty, pretty quickly. But if not, then you can actually make use of our, what we call more protocol, Connectors. So, for example, we have a REST API component. Uh, we have um, more generic, uh, we have like a SOAP component. Uh, we have a JDBC component. JD, sorry, JDBC component. So, you can often interact with the systems using our um, more, more protocol based components. So, you have the choice to create your own component, um, and that is something that you can reuse and publish across your entire. Um, a contract, or you can actually build integrations with uh, with our, our components. What typically we find is people will often build up quick kind of proof of concepts with that, with the with the REST or SOAP or CSV component, and then once they've established what they're trying to do, they kind of will productionize that into their own component if that's where the direction they need to go. Cool. So basically, everybody can use it, even though the specific component is not there. Um, so we have another question from Julia. Uh, she asks, how do you deal with fixing data like merging files or let's say changing date formats or currency formats or stuff like that? Sure. Okay, so let's 
let's open up our flow. So this is the, the, the problem which to do with merging data, right? Or sorry, transforming data, which is a constant challenge in integration. You know, system A and system B don't have the same data structure and you need to uh, merge, sort, sort out the data. So we give you the tools. Like I said earlier, uh, the, the data on the platform is always JSON. So it's consistent. And so what we provide is a language uh, called JSON article or JSON ASON. What that does is that lets you manipulate that JSON and and uh, output the data in any way you, you wish. So if we just go to one of our steps, and this is consistent across the board, right? So every field in Elastic IO accepts the JSON article expression. Now what we've got here, and we'll try and keep this relatively um, straightforward, but just to demonstrate the kind of power. So then the first one here, we just did first name and last name, okay? And this is all shown on the UI, but if I flip to JSONator mode, you actually get a, a small insight into the syntax that's going on behind it, okay? So first is the name of the field on my data, and then we've got ampersand, and then double quote space, ampersand last. So we've, we've, we're working with a string here. If I'm just get rid of this uh, one here, and we just expand upon it. If I go to JSONator mode, I can expand this thing and look at some functions, okay? And these functions here are listed some standard functions. So transformation, let's turn it to uppercase or uh, cast it as a number or change its format or round it or do whatever, some max average, yeah? So standard kind of functionality. Um, but this JSONator, this, this JSONator language is actually very, very powerful. We can do far more complicated expressions. I don't know, sift arrays, filters, lookups. You know, you can actually do, do, do really quite advanced uh, uh, transformation on the fly. And you can just do it in this field here. Okay, so you know, a simple case of casting as uppercase. There's our, sorry, if we just look at that, you see that the first name is Kalia. And here we've cast up a case, okay? So we have JSON utter, which gives us the power to do transformations. I kind of liken it to a bit like Excel. If you can write Excel formulas, you can use JSON utter. And so if you then know what Excel formulas are like, you know, Excel formulas extend onto, you know, macros and much more complicated uh, stuff. It's a bit like JSON utter. You can extend it all the way through to really complicated functions and that can be really powerful. And the great thing here, is they just go straight into the UI. There's no kind of code required. You can just build them up yourself. And the other bit that we have, for those familiar, is um, for date, date time stuff, is uh, moment.js. So you can do date and time transformations using moment.js on the interface, just as you would, uh, just as you might else elsewhere. If you look down here, it's listed. Uh, date functions, moment. Okay, so the whole moment library is available. So there's JSON after moment and actually re regular expressions are supported as well. So you've got lots of power to, to do those manipulations on the fly. Wow, very interesting. So basically the data of the format is not an impediment to do this um, integrations. And we That's have right, one yeah. question uh, from David and he asks, what if the system is on premise and not on the cloud? Sure, so we touched on it briefly. Um, we have a process called age or local agents. Um, so local agent is, if we think of Elastico platform as a, a huge cluster with many, many Docker containers running, each Docker container performing an integration task for, for, a, you know, for a step on the platform. What the local agent does is the local agent is actually a virtual machine uh, running uh, in any of the main technologies, Hyper-V, VirtualBox, et cetera. Virtual machine, um, which you place on your premise, and inside that virtual machine, we're running a, a piece, a, a part of the Elastic IO infrastructure to enable you to run a container on premise. Okay, so, so visually it's a bit hard to understand, but basically you have a virtual machine you place on your premise, Inside that virtual machine is, is, Kubernetes, is running Kubernetes, and that establishes VPN connectivity back up to the platform. And so effectively you have um, 
tasks or steps in your flow, which are either defined as being running on the cloud or running on premise. And you actually, um, I don't have a local agent installed here, but if you, if you were to go in and look at the uh, credentials, you can actually define the credentials to run, you define this step to run on the local agent. Okay, so you can basically mix and match, you can create a whole hybrid infrastructure. Actually, as well for our sort of larger enterprise customers, it is possible as well to actually deploy the entire Elastic Open uh, uh, platform on premise as well. Um, but typically, the local agent will suffice. Wow, cool. Very, very interesting and very clarifying. Now we learn how to use the platform. Thank you very much, Ben. No, thank you. And remember, if you have any further questions, you can always submit it to Elastic. Um, sorry, how to at elastic.io or tweet us at hashtag how to elastic.io. Thank you very much. And have a nice day. Thank you.